Hello all, this is Nori from My Service Depot, and today we're going to take a look at how to integrate or create your own PDF forms to use for iFleeter routing. A fillable PDF form is just a digital copy of the piece of paper your company uses currently. They can be loaded into iFleeter Routesy, and they can also pull information from the app onto the digital form. They're easy to make and even easier for the technicians to use. The other benefit you'll receive when using forms is that any form filled out by the field is automatically stored forever in Smart Service, so you can always retrieve a copy. Whether it's a checklist, inspection form, or a customized invoice, forms are a great way for customizing your process. As a reminder, iFleet does have a default work order built in, which may be something that your company would like to use. To generate a copy of this form, you'll need to finalize a job in iFleet. Once the form is signed, you'll be prompted to either open the form or email it. From there, you can determine whether or not your company needs a customized document. First, there are a few prerequisites that need to be taken care of. You'll need to obtain a copy of Adobe Acrobat DC Pro or similar, which is available from the link on your screen and in the video's description. Once you have either downloaded the trial or purchased this software, it's time to move on to the other required item. You'll need the forms list from the online manual. A link is available on screen and in the video description. This article is what's called the form fields, which will be useful when creating your PDF document. You'll want to click on the button corresponding to the product you plan on developing a form for. Once you've done so, you can download the form using the normal functions in your browser. Before we get started in Adobe, let's take a look at how a PDF form works. I have a copy of a PDF form loaded onto my devices. Once I've added the form to iFleet, I can use it on any job wherever I'd like. You'll notice that this job has some information such as the customer's name, address, my notes on the job, and some line items they're purchasing. All of these can be imported from the job to our form automatically. By tapping this plus symbol, iFleet gives me the option to select which form I'd like to use this time. Once I tap on the desired form, iFleet will load the PDF, which will capture information added to the job. When building the form, I get to choose what information should be captured and where it should be displayed. This works because each text box is named after one of the codes we found from the form field list. When iFleet loads the form, it checks these codes and adds the corresponding information. Afterwards, I'll have options to do extras like radio buttons, check boxes, signatures, photos, and more. Now that we see how forms can be used by the field, we can take a look at how the form was created. How we start will depend on what you already have for a form. You can start from scratch in Acrobat, or you can export a copy of your form as a PDF from programs like Microsoft Word or Adobe Illustrator. If you only have a paper copy, I suggest making a digital copy instead of using a scan for the best quality. Since most offices have a copy of Microsoft Word, I'll start my first draft there. Let's open up a new Word document and start structuring our form. First, let's set aside some space for things like a company logo and the address at the top. You can load these images in now or later on in Acrobat. Secondly, I'll want some customer information to appear in our form. I'll add some space for things like the customer's name, address, and anything else I'd like. You might also construct a table for displaying line items added to the job. Make sure to give yourself enough room for the desired fields, things such as the item's name, description, quantity, and amount. We can add some extra space for a tax in total as well. If this is a form you expect the iFleet user to fill out while in the field, leave some space for things like interactive checkboxes, dropdowns, or radio buttons that we can add later on in Acrobat. I'll add some terms and conditions at the bottom and leave a space for a signature. Once our form is complete, save a copy of your Word document as a PDF in a convenient location. This can be done when you're saving the document by switching the Save as Type box to a PDF format. Move a copy of the PDF form to the PC that has Adobe installed. For this video, I'll be using Acrobat 11 Pro. If you've downloaded a different version of Adobe, you may have different options. If you're having trouble locating any of the features used in this video, the link on the screen will take you to the user guide for your version of Adobe. As a general note, not all Adobe features are supported with an iFleet. You may contact our support team if you would like to use a feature that was not shown in this video. Open the form using Adobe Acrobat Pro and open the Tools menu at the top right. 
Before we get started further into our form, let's take a look at the features we have in Adobe. The Content Editing tab will allow you to add new text or modify the existing text that we've added in Word earlier. These options can become especially helpful when you're trying to label things like text boxes or update verbiage that was added to the form in the future. When iFleet uses this form, they will not be able to edit the text placed with these tools. The Forms tab lets you add editable fields that can be used by iFleet. Any field that needs to pull data from iFleet or needs to be filled out by the iFleet user will be created using these options. First, let's tell Adobe that we need our flattened PDF to become a fillable form. From the Forms tab, use the Create option, and Adobe will ask you if you'd like to create a form from scratch or use an existing document. Choose to create your form from an existing document and click Next to continue. By default, Adobe should select the current document, otherwise you may navigate to your document from this window. Once you have located your document, click Continue. Adobe will display the Add New Field options on the right. By clicking this option, we have several choices depending on what kind of field we need. I'll choose to add a new text field for some customer information in this case, and then I'll drop that text field where I'd like this information to appear. You can use the handles at each corner of the box to resize it, and the arrow keys on your keyboard to adjust its position on the form. Once the box has been placed, double-click on it to open the Text Field Properties window. To make iFleet auto-fill this box with the customer's name when we use the form, we'll need to name this box according to the form field list from the online manual. By opening the form field list, you'll see that each of the field codes on the left corresponds with the text field on the right. When naming your text fields, it is important to use the exact casing from the form field list. If you are unsure of which field codes to use, we recommend loading the form test field into iFleet first, using it as a form, and letting it populate with customer information. This way you can see what information each of the field codes will pull. If your form will include dropdowns, once you've placed that dropdown box, you want to double click to open up the dropdown properties and go to the options tab. Here, you can add as many items as you need to the dropdown but make sure to add an item that is a blank space or something like NA at the top of the list. The reason for doing this is that when iFleet loads this form, it will automatically select the first option in the list to display in the dropdown by default. If you need to copy and paste a dropdown elsewhere on your form, make sure that the new dropdown name is unique. As with the items and everything else for these form fields, if the names of the boxes are the same, Filling out one will automatically fill out the other at the same time. When it comes to forms, line items, equipment, and assets are handled differently. For example, each time you add a line item to a job in iFleet, they are numbered accordingly. If you look at the form fields, the codes for certain fields have a number in brackets at the end. The number in the brackets is what indicates to iFleet what item you would like and where. Because of this, you'll want to be careful when copying and pasting these fields within your form. If you do not rename the fields to the appropriate number for that item, the original items will be duplicated on the form. If you would like a signature on your form, use the Digital Signature field to create places to collect signatures. You may wish to create a secondary box next to your signature field for capturing the current date of the signature. To add a space for a photo on your form, create a new large signature box. You will name this box something like iFleet Picture 001 as I have done on the screen. That way iFleet will know that you would like to insert a photo from the job. Once all the necessary fields are added to your customized form, save a copy for testing in iFleet. It's easy to upload a copy of your form into iFleet whether it's an Android or iOS device. You will need to repeat these steps for any device that will require the PDF form. To get started, create an email and attach your PDF. Then email it to an account that is accessible on that device. If you are using an iOS phone or a tablet, open the email and long press on the form attachment. This should bring up a list of options asking what do I do with this attachment. Choose copy to iFleet 4, which should launch the iFleet app. Once inside, choose to import the PDF as a fillable form. If you're using an Android device, you will need to download the Adobe Acrobat Reader application from the Google Play Store before you start using your PDF. You will still email the form as an attachment to the device, but instead choose to download the PDF to a convenient location on your device. 
Once you have a copy, locate the PDF and long press until the device asks you which app you'd like to open the PDF with. From there, you can choose the iFleet 4 PDF import option. Once you have uploaded your PDF form to the device, you can use it as many times as you'd like from as many jobs as you'd like by pressing the plus symbol within the job next to the new forms header. From there, you may select which form you would like to use this time. If you're using an iOS device, the form will open in the operating system's default app. If you're finished filling out the form, at least for now, you can close the form by tapping the Done button at the top right. If you're using an Android device, this is where the Adobe Reader application comes in. Once you add your form using the plus symbol mentioned earlier, it will appear on the job below the form's header and by pressing the form name, your device should open the Adobe Reader app. This will allow you to make edits to the fields and make annotations on the form. Once you have finished with your form, at least for the moment, you can press the back button to return to iFleet. If your company has a work order or invoice form you'd like to integrate with iFleet, you may replace the default work order form built into the system with a few quick steps. Back in the office, we need to enter the Smart Service Setup to make a change. Not all users will have access to this section, so if you are not able to locate it, please contact your system administrator to make the change for you. Click on the iFleet tab on the far right, and if you've already sent your customized form to all of your devices, click the Use Custom Work Order option. Afterwards, all iFleet devices will start requesting that you designate a form or forms as your custom work order. To set a default form as your custom work order, let's return to our devices. On each device, open the iFleet dashboard and tap on the Settings menu at the bottom. From here, search for the Custom Work Order section. Once inside, you will see a list of all forms loaded onto your device. You may tap to select which form should be listed as the default work order. If you have more than one work order, you may select multiple forms to be the default. This will cause iFleet to ask you which form you would like to use for that job whenever you finish a job. Now that our default work order is selected, we can open up a job and finalize it to see the results. Upon tapping Finalize, you should see that your default work order will appear in place of the usual terms and conditions built into the system. If you notice that your form is populating incorrectly any time that you use it, you may need to take it back into Adobe and change some of the fields that you were using. To remove the current version of the form from your device, enter the iFleet dashboard, choose the settings option again, and one of your options in here will say the forms list, where you can view any forms that you have uploaded to that device and remove any undesired copies of the form. With that, we come to the end of our forms tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please contact your support team at 888-518-0818. As a reminder, we do offer custom form development, and if you would like one of our representatives to quote you on form development, please send us an email containing a current copy of your form and your logo to support at myservicedepot.com. As always, for more tips and tricks, please visit us at smartservice.com wiki.